Hello everybody. First of all, I would like to thank all my viewers and my subscribers who have given me so much love and support. Under management of dental trauma, in this lecture we will be dealing with one part of the crown fractures. And those of you who have come for the first time to this channel, do subscribe to it and check out other videos on trauma which have been covered so far. The links of these have been given in the description box below. Let's go ahead with this one. First are the uncomplicated crown fractures. Uncomplicated crown fractures are those which will involve enamel and dentine without any pulp involvement. The choice of treatment for these depends upon the extent of the fracture and the location of the fracture. First is enamel infarction. It involves cracks in the enamel without loss of the tooth structure. Tendinous on percussion, mostly it is negative. In case it is positive, then you have to check for root fractures or luxation injuries. Radiographic view is periapical that is recommended and mostly no abnormalities are seen. However, in case there are symptoms like tooth impaction or this loosening of the tooth or patient is feeling numbness in that area, then you have to go in for other radiographic views and angulations. And treatment, for the cases as shown in the photograph, no treatment is required. In case there is a small area along the incisal edges, then we can go in for selective grinding. For a larger area, acid etching and sealing with composite restoration is required to prevent the discoloration of the infarction lines. While you are here, do subscribe to this channel and we proceed on. Enamel fracture. It is a complete fracture of enamel without any exposure of dentine. In this case, the tooth is normally not tender to percussion. However, in case it is positive in, in its tenderness, then you have to check for root fractures and luxation injuries. Mobility seen is normal. Sensibility tests are mostly positive. Radiographic views, periapical and occlusal views are recommended to rule out for fractures of the root or luxation injuries. And the treatment options are, now in case it is a slight fracture, as you can see in the photograph, in this case, we can go in for tooth contouring and grinding of the incisal edges. In this way, we achieve this situation. You can see the teeth are nicely contoured after doing selective grinding. Now, in case a patient comes back with the tooth fragment, you can reattach the crown fragment back. However, if the fragment is lost and the area is slightly large and you can't go in for selective grinding, then we restore it with composite. Follow-up can be after 6 to 8 weeks and then 1 year. Enamel dentine fracture. There is fracture of the enamel and the dentine without any pulp exposure. Tenderness on percussion usually seen as negative. In case it's positive, then you have to rule out root fractures or luxation injury. Mobility mostly seen is normal. Sensibility tests are usually positive. Radiographic views involve periapical and occlusal view to rule out root fractures or any luxation injury like impaction or extrusion, intrusion that may be present. Lip and cheek radiographs are taken to search for any foreign body that might be embedded there. Treatment options they include reattachment of the crown fragment. If the patient comes back with the crown fragment, you can bond it back. Then you can restore it with composite. Composite built-up is done. However, in case the fracture is close to the pulp, then you go in for the third option, which is a sandwich technique. Here you put calcium hydroxide to cover the pulp, which is followed by a layer of glass inomer cement, and then restoration with composite. This is called sandwich technique. Follow-up is after 6 to 8 weeks or 1 year. I would like to explain crown reattachment procedure. Now, what are the best cases for this? They're basically small uncomplicated fractures where there is a good distance from the fracture site and the pulp. Now, the fragment, it may be recovered, brought to the clinic at the time of injury or it may be recovered later. And this particular fragment, when you receive it, you place it in saline or in tap water to prevent its discoloration or development of any infarctions due to dehydration. Now we have received the fracture fragment, we've placed it in saline. What do we do next? What we do is we take the inner surface of the fragment and we etch it with orthophosphoric acid for 10 seconds. You wash it, apply a layer of bonding agent and you cure it. Then on the tooth surface, fracture tooth surface, we apply 
the etchant, etch it for 10 seconds, wash it, dry it, apply a layer of bonding agent and we cure it. What do we do then? Then we take a flowable composite and put a thin layer of it onto the tooth surface and thin layer here. And then we reattach the fragment back in position. You can see it very clearly. In this case, the patient had a fall and he brought the tooth fragment along with him. So the surface was prepared and the fragment was bonded back. You see this form of treatment, it gives very good aesthetic results since the original tooth anatomy is restored with the portion of tooth itself. Also at the same time, it permits continual monitoring of the pulpal status through the fragment. Composite buildup is another option that we talked about. Now you look at this case, the tooth is fractured and it has to be built up with composite. So how we proceed with it, our first step would be shade matching and shade selection. You can use shade guides for this. You select the desired shade and then we acid etch the tooth on this surface, acid etch it, wash it and dry it. Then next apply bonding agent and cure it. After that apply composite material incrementally. That means each layer is applied and it is cured and slowly the tooth is built up to the desired shape and size. So you can see it here, the patient was pretty happy with it. That's all for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. Our next lecture will be on the management of complicated crown fractures in which we'll be discussing treatments like pulp capping, pulpotomy, apexification in details. While you're here, do subscribe to this channel, like it and share it with your friends. Thank you.